Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Hallelujah. There's someone I just felt led in my spirit. Um, he didn't even plan to just come and minister. But I'll let him just come and bless us 10 minutes. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm not the kind of person that is too quick to do this. But um, we went for a meeting. And before I came up on stage, he ministered. And I was greatly blessed. I was first and foremost moved by his sincerity for God. Many musicians are just noisemakers looking for ladders to climb up. By the grace of God, you will never see those kind of people on this stage in the name of Jesus Christ. Even if I'm not around, something will drive them. Hallelujah. So I'd like your heart to be open. It's 10 minutes and he's going to lead us. Um, I prayed for him and I know that God will really bless him. Everyone you see who comes up, and not only to bless him, but to also further announce his ministry and speak it loud. There is an anointing. Yes. It is within the power of God's people to speak. When we see people who are doing things that are worthwhile, we speak and we endorse and we announce them. And the day they mess up, we rebuke them. The day they refuse, we command the glory to live and it will live. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. His name is the sax preacher. Many of you may have heard him and I love him. Come, God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. God bless you. All right, so we'll give you 10 minutes. Just bless our hearts. Our hearts are open to receive of your anointing and your ministry. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Daddy, I want to say thank you very much. I want to use one minute to say since the day I shut my eyes on you, I have not remained the same. Your protocol called and said they are preparing me for a meeting. And I said, no, I am coming. I will come. Sir, you are a blessing to this generation, sir. It's a privilege to have him as a father. By his grace, I am like 10 years in ministry now. But I have never seen a man like him. And I said, no. I have a meeting tonight in Kaduna. But I said, no, I must come. and I didn't have the intention of ministry. Sir. I'm just here to just listen and enjoy you. That's my 
mission here. But if a daddy can call you and give you an instruction, you must go ahead and do it. You can't say no. Daddy, thank you, sir. It doesn't take God a second to visit you. If there's a second in between second, it doesn't take God. It's just like a speed of light. The book of John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit. And he's looking for those that will worship him. In spirit and in fruit. You must let go. You must forget your personality. You must forget all the things you have done in the past. You must let go of what you have done some minutes before you come to this auditorium. And that is why the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 4, verse 10 to be precise. And he said, we're going to join the 24 elders. Those are kings. They remove their crown and they drop it to the ground to worship the I am that I am. The Agbanelagbaton. The Arugo Otoy. The Erutete Timbe. The Omnisayacha. The Agidigba. That is why the house man called him Serkin Salam. The Yoruba man look at him and call him Erujeje. Abanilagbaton. Obalana, Obaloni, Obatiti Aye. The Yoruba man look at him and say, Kabiesi. Now, he now look at him again and Kabiosi. Evil man look at him and say, How do I express this God? Mm -hmm. And he now look at him and say, I did ah. look at the heavens. No pillar is holding the heavens, up, but the heavens still stand. Who said there is no God? In the next 60 seconds, I want you to do something crazy. something that you have never done before says let everything that has bread
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. And um, you see sometimes when people do certain things, they themselves do not even know what it is that they have done. I've prayed for you, but I want to pray for you. Come with your friends. You will step into levels you never dreamt of. It doesn't take time. It takes an anointing. You see, listen, listen. It is not what you do that makes you succeed. It is how you do it. It's not doing certain things that make people succeed. I want to pray for you. I have learned in my little life that the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The difference. Praise the Lord. I stretch my hands upon all of you right now as I speak. May the grace that lifts men come upon every one of you as I speak right now. Receive it right now. The grace that lifts people. There is an anointing that lifts a man. It's not trial and error. Let it come upon you right now. Open up the gates of cities, the gates of territories, and I speak in the name of Jesus. A level of grace. May your saxophone stop being an instrument. May it become a weapon from today. A weapon of healing. You and your entire team. Let it burn like fire in your spirit. Like fire upon your spirit. Never to be the same. You will sing with the sounds of the heavens. And everybody that hears that sound will know that your communications are of the spirit. There is a grace that lifts men. You can try, you can struggle, you can beg. You can connect. No. See, every time, listen, every time you see consistent results, regardless of the situation, there is an anointing. Please, learn this. There is an anointing. There is an anointing that translates men swallows up the weaknesses of people may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ God will give you wisdom let your ministry enter another dimension I pray for character for all of you see this is usually the problem listen let me I'm, I'm teaching you are learning the most important aspect of the anointing is the character to maintain it not the anointing because you see the anointing is very charismatic the most powerful ability of a man of God is self-control 
the ability to keep quiet even when you have what to say the ability to walk within the jurisdiction of the grace apportion there are many of we people we don't have self-control especially over an opportunity like this everybody now wants to show and you do not know where god has stopped and you want to continue to stretch it to show you are anointed and then you step out of the spirit and begin to walk in the flesh because some of you are here for this same anointing but you see the, it's not just the anointing believe me this is not an issue of prayer and fasting it's an issue of knowing god and understanding his ways god is only committed to backing what he instructed if he did not direct you he will not back you hallelujah god bless you john chapter 3 verse 16 let's just look at scripture quickly and then we we'll pray there is a lot that god wants to do tonight these guys have already stared the anointing and you see the thing with the anointing is once he's stared it doesn't stop he doesn't know whether it's miracle service or easter john chapter 3 verse 16 i like you all to be sensitive the anointing has been stirred up in this place many of you do not know what the stirring of the anointing is the moment your eyes sees there is a relationship between your heart and your eyes so once your eyes sees it immediately your spirit is open and the moment your spirit is open the spirit of god starts moving he doesn't care whether you are preached or not because that's his desire hallelujah and usually once the anointing starts moving it's very difficult to contain it because the hearts of people are open in the name of jesus i'm hearing the sound of thunder i know this is not physical i'm hearing a sound of thunder like lightning is coming upon people right now in the congregation why do i see this it's like the sound of thunder what I hear in my spirit. hallelujah please pay attention the meeting is on i'm seeing ministering spirits it's a class of angels i'm seeing them walk inside and outside just let me do what is happening ministering spirits there are not many times i see these kinds of angels i'm seeing them walking inside and outside ministering spirits they are angels that impart strange levels of graces ah, ah, yeah. They will touch you where you are. It will be like fire. They will touch you where you are. As they touch you, they release your miracles. As they touch you, they release your breakthroughs as they touch you they break those chains nah. 
They are touching you on behalf of families. Touching you on behalf of families. direction that's what i hear god is giving men direction it's like an anointing it will come on you outside and inside direction and end to that confusion right now it's coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now for marriage direction Direction, direction, direction for where to settle down. Geographic location, direction is coming by the Holy Ghost. Direction. Somebody is praying and say, Lord, show me. The Lord is saying, I am showing you. It's coming upon your spirit. I'm giving you direction on what to do. Direction. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone. And the Lord is saying, take it out. Lord, where are those people whose destinies have been buried? As I'm speaking right now, inside and outside. Right now, right now. As I speak, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, where you are sitting, you will receive a visitation. I pull it out. This is a miracle service. I pull it out now. Oh yes, release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. Release that lady's destiny. Something is happening to you where you are. Something is happening to you where you are. Begin to receive it by faith. Like the dew of heaven resting in this place, inside and outside. Lord, we receive what you are doing.
Just sit down if you can. Those under the anointing, just leave them. John 3, 16. just want to the Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump you have a lump in your left breast check it right now check it right now check it and come out right now right now I don't know why God is just interrupting please check it check it check it right now in fact I see three people check it this is a family please we are not playing games inside and outside i'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing the name like Augustina Augustina if there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as it's happening to you, there's somebody outside. This same anointing is touching the person outside. The second overflow, the anointing of the Spirit is touching somebody outside. The Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness. Because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft. It has tied your life and your family down. And the Lord is telling me, release Augustina. Release Augustina release augustina release augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of jesus i release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify i release both of you prophetically in the name of jesus christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah i'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family god wants me to minister to you are five five people I don't know if there is a mother I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. And the Bible says. That he proved that love. By giving. His only begotten son. Please listen. Don't worry about what is happening. Just let me have your attention please. He says. He gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now Please help her, wrap her. I command that spirit to leave her right now. 
now. And never return. In the name of Jesus. Release her family. Release. I see a lot of money being tied. Release it now as you go. In the name of Jesus the Christ. So the Bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for God so loved the world the word there is cosmos the social system that has to do with people listen please and has to do with the entire territory the social system he says for God so loved the world and he proved that love listen listen because love must be manifested to be appreciated are we together now and the bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophet Abraham, Samson, Isaac, Judges, everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth. Listen, Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple. He said, repent. The word repent is not the word turn from your sins. No. Preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding. The word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another. Please just be patient with me. This family or minister. Are we together now? Turning from one direction to the other. But the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one that for me gave your life. Hallelujah. 
So he gave. Like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave. He donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen. Jesus did not just come. Please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible. The Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people, like the ten lepers. He would heal one and just walk away. Because his desire was not to show power. His desire was to do the will of the Father. He was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry. People tried to say, look, build a ministry. And he said, no, 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 no. I can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then the Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself. And then the Bible says he went to Gethsemane and there he cried. He prayed until tears were like drops of blood. Afterwards, he was ready to be crucified. And brothers and sisters, I know that we celebrate Easter. Today is Good Friday. Pain is what made today good. Are we together? Sacrifice is what made today good. If he refused to lay down his life. Listen, when Pilate looked at him and said, Don't you know I have the power to free you? He said, ah, 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 ah. He said No man has this power except it is given unto him by my father. He said, I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again. In other words, I was not coerced. My love for you made me to sacrifice my life, my reputation and everything. We talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all-wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless, I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood. He gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen, listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place. 
because the Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray. Right? He said every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God. Our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment please. At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. They are all looking at me. Um, sit down. Especially this my friend. Friend, how are you? What's his name? Aaron. Kelvin. Just get somewhere. For, they can sit around. And I will attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what. Hallelujah. So, please come, sir. I offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? I am what? Watching. All kinds of things have told you they love you. But they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him. He gave his health. The father gave him. He gave his prosperity. The father gave him. When we say his life. Let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? The ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases. The father gave him. He gave it away in exchange. The Bible says he was rich, but he gave it. Are we together now? He had a reputation of dominion, but he laid it aside. I hope you know that they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies. A 33-year-old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still would not be able to take it. See, listen. If you think what happened on the cross is what Jesus just died for, physically, you will be deceived. Because there are human beings who have been crucified. What he stopped you from was not the physical activity. It was what was happening in the spirit. You can do the physical one, I guarantee you. People have been crucified. But you don't know what that meant in the spirit. A lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening. He became Adam from Gethsemane. From Gethsemane to the cross, he was no longer the Christ. He was Jesus, Adam, the very man of sin. Mortality came upon him. Please listen. And the father kept watching. He had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross and they nailed him, as his blood began to drip upon the earth, and in that excruciating pain, 
It was a way of torturing criminals. He was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. He was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness. And he said, if it's for you, I will do it. But he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight. Three words that represented victory. It is finished. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't study English. But I know that when a man says, it is finished. It is finished. Is a reality that is present and continuous forever. Not it was finished. You would have said the condition for it finishing has changed. So we have to start another one. It is finished. The question is, what is the it that has been finished? First, that inability to access the Father. We call it lack of righteousness. He said that error is finished. That, 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 that Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings, having to atone for your sins by your own strength, I brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God. He said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation. My own access. Like I organize a program. And I invite someone. And while you are about to drive him. I say no, no, no. That's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest. He also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned. And this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam. And every man that came from him, let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1, when you read down what? I am he that was dead, but now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth, access to dominion, access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected, watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle, and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations, meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess of, of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption 
man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ it's an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we're in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believers victory is what christ did on the cross but not just what christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh i know what he did no let's continue john 3 verse 16. please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what jesus did that's not where i'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life who is the him that's where i want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him, 
see that brothers and sisters i am many things and all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me are we together a child believes a father a worker believes a ceo a jimmy's daughter believes in her father she doesn't believe in a ceo we believe in a jimmy adegbeye the multi-millionaire that's what you believe you will never get fatherly love from that dimension are we together now you may get financial advice you may get intelligence you may get all of this i believe in professor femi you will get the intellectual dimension there is a dimension of god you must believe to have life many of us have believed him as a healer you can be healed and still go to hell please hear me many of us have believed him as a savior you can have i mean you can have a what do we call it a, as a shepherd what dimension of him have you believed i will tell you now ready there is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved whosoever calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved what is lord the word lord means a conqueror are we together now listen please it's not just a savior like the one who died he didn't resurrect as a savior he died as a savior he did not resurrect as a savior he resurrected as lord a winner a champion one qualified to transfer what he has and the bible says whoever believed that listen whoever believes in him that name that was given he said he shall not perish the word perish there is not the word go to hell are we together because the bible says whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now thank you don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not want depend on any external input for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a big thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received 
that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i am I'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to walk in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes, he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe. God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. The same way you say, I have a car. The same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life I should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the suppose by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content 
of that life. It's like buying a phone. You admire it, you look at it, but you do not know how to work with it. That was the lamentation of the psalmist in Psalm 82 from verse 5. He says, they know not. Not they have not. They know not. Neither will they understand. He said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said, ye are God and all of you are children of the most high. He says, but you shall what? Die like men, men. Listen, please listen. An heir, as long as he is a child, does what? The Bible starts by calling him what? An heir, a partaker of an inheritance, a partaker of a reality. But it says, as long as he's a child, the word child here is devoid of strategy, devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process. He said he differed not from a slave. I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a cause. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. Because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God. Speakings according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left. But he said, as it is now, we do not yet see all things. Are we together now? So, you have come to answer the altar call. The life is in you. But you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we're all ready together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying Keep believing that it's gone. One day it will go. Hey, wonder shall never end. If you have that kind of ideology, you are in for trouble. And then on the other hand, there are those who act as though they really have nothing. So they are trying. They live per day. We survive today. Let's see how the war of tomorrow will be. I know that there will be all kinds of things. Are we together now? So although they read, that there is victory in Christ. The truth is they don't believe it. They just know less fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this, is a sign that he's an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh-huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing you open your heavens, when I'm tithing, 
I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my think God's life and all its content, the way, the life of God, that can become any and everything, any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word. And as the word opens up, it shows me the dimensions of its operation. And then I look out first to believe. Number two, to respond. Everybody say believe. Say respond. This is your part as a believer. You, when you respond to what you do not believe, is a waste of time. So the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter. And Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging. I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ and I really believe in his word. But I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases. And my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this. Brothers and sisters, there is a part. There is a part that you have to play. Believing is not enough. Believing talks of conviction. Persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement. But there must be a response. Your response is your action of faith. So the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews. There remained a rest, a Sabbath for the people of God. In spite of what Christ has done, there still remains a rest. And then it says, let us therefore labor. This is Paul in the New Testament. What is the idea of labor? Push God aside. No, let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is. And it says, whoever labors like that, there is a guarantee he will enter his rest. There is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body. Believe me, it's not just by claiming. Um, you will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting, we're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the Spirit. 
So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction. Deception. The first deception is that you don't need to do anything again. Oh, brothers and sisters, hear me. I fear God. It's a big deception. As free as salvation claims to be, if you do not respond, you are going to hell. There is always a participation. That's what we call koinonia. Everybody say participation. If you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it as a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith. You believe I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of God's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith a believer is not a possessor a believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, he's standing up. is a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Hey, Jimmy, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me, although he has not seen it. So he's putting my integrity to the line. It's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing. He believed. I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looked for anybody who is greater than him. So that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not, stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something. So in case you doubt what I'm about to do, find out whether I did that thing or not. He's about to make a statement. And he's saying, don't you dare doubt me for what I'm about to say. He that did not spare his what? Own son. But delivered him up. For who? What's the next statement? How shall he not with him also freely give us what? This is God speaking. He said, look at me. Your healing is a lesser thing. I gave Jesus 
what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking god this my this i've been bleeding for six months non-stop and god said if i spared not jesus i will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself i will do it if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am yeah. is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am hallelujah if the father did not give jesus it's like a man listen it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife and the guy said i'm a just person and he punished his wife then somebody throws alarm and say oh guy you know we are nigerians what do you think he's going to do you say that's my wife inside the gutter i'm a military man this is my wife i paid the price for six months to get a yes from her she's in that gutter I don't know the consequence of my action if you think i'm going to forgive you listen if it took god refusing to even give jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake then i assure you whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night <laughs> hallelujah do you believe me we are going to pray and say lord help my own belief that listen 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 that spirit that makes me keep wondering can god do it listen don't don't make that foolish statement tonight i i was praying on the tonight before i came here i was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding if you know the story behind that dear woman she shared it here all kinds of things when I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray i have a part to play i lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able
Are you praying? sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship, mountain of cancer, mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight. In the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond please listen do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4 don't turn there the Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful please let me sit down sir watch this it says they saw a man who had been there and he he, he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms Peter and John and he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was there. nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood. the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak I put pressure it's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not God will not just get up and act listen it was God that put this miracle service you're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say Lord I put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. Put pressure on his integrity. 
we have come oh god that you prove yourself shake it we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you died for God so loved me. He died for me. I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling. There are still people outside. Please run and catch up quickly. Quickly. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say, join them. Make your way quickly. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired. Tired of habits. Tired of addictions. Run to the cross. Come running. Come running. Come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming. hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away You don't have to be afraid No man condemns you The mercy The mercy Look at me, all of you in front. Some of
of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions I surrender it to you I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that from today I'm no longer a sinner I've been crucified with Christ and I have his life right now Jesus has paid the price I receive his life and I declare that I'm a new creation. The old has gone. I begin a new journey. Satan, you no longer have any accusation against me. I pray for you. Keep your hands lifted. Father, on this Good Friday, we present these souls as trophies to you. This is a response to what Jesus did. Oh, receive these souls. Koinonia, present these souls as trophies of victory. Trophies of victory. This is the sacrifice. The rewards of the sacrifice. Hallelujah. I pray for you. I declare that your sins are forgiven. And the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty clothes in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen I want you to do this real fast so you will join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit you say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on Till my answer comes, I won't give up, Lord, I won't give up, I'll keep holding on, until my change comes, Lord, I won't give up, Lord, I won't give up, I'll keep holding on. Till my answer comes, I won't give up, Lord, I won't give up, 
I'll keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. It's being streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly, quickly, please, your prayer request. Listen, for those of us who are just coming, I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. When he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly. And then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones Please make sure the online community participate. There's a God that answers prayers here. Remember we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers help them. If I were you, I will begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life. Or you must come into my life. begin to pass your requests very quickly very quickly very quickly my goodness I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place that's why I'm saying we should hurry up we feel the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what 
your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from Ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between Kwara state and Ekiti state and I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind I was saying Guinness book of record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we're going back to the north but we discern that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we played it was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying Ejimi. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures i thought he was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing i said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah I, I was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had I said, what kind of grace is this 
we went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years, alive and doing well. In those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years. One, how many? 41. I saw the obituary. He just died. 141. I said, I got it. Let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life. No. See, listen. If you don't believe in transference of grace, you will die young. Don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating. I didn't see any hospital around there. I just saw a church. And people, is you can be 190 and not be able to talk. But you are 141. The guy 132 was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself. And you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. In this place, once you are 60 years, you hold crutches. What cause is that? I always believed it, but now that I've seen it, ah, there's that song that says, My eyes have seen. Don't play it. My eyes have seen it. There are many strange things that will fall today. Listen, if you care, you can receive. If you don't, when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, Glenn, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years, still a lecturer. Alive. 100 and something years. You see the women as if they are 50 something. But some of them are in their 90s, 80s, 100s. That's grace, brothers. It's not about anybody praying for longevity. There is an anointing that comes upon territories. And tonight, in the course of the meeting, is when it's time to pray that, please receive it. We need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom. Pray and say, Lord, my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand. Lift the drums. 
just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shape baba kata altars 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 right now shake it 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 in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it about is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies jakatarata mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three is like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now. Let them go now. My dear, tap that lady for me. Yes, that lady nodding. 
an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Father we turn go ahead and pray Lord my request is turned into a testimony I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth, we command the firmament, we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every burden placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place we command a performance of the requests the desires placed here tonight in the name of jesus we decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of jesus and end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of jesus blind eyes open Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily. According to the seasons of life. They receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. And receive the prophecy. You can. I saw a spirit. And, and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written. In the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Shake te kapa. Shake rosata. The kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands 
the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it oh let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you is demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me is a lie there is a man too the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life 
from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah psalm 8 from verse 4 to 6 what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him verse 5 says for you have made him a little lower than the angels the word there is god elohim and has crowned him with glory and honor six thou made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands that thou has put all things under his feet bless our hearts in the name of jesus now please look up everyone we have limited time god is a god of times and seasons he dwells in light but his dealings with men is fragmented into times and seasons listen carefully that means for every season there is what god is doing are we together and the character of his operation is that there are graces and distributions of spiritual possibilities allocated for seasons that follow his word it looks like he's following men but it follows his word is because the men receive his word that's why it follows them the power of god does not follow men it follows his word and if that word is in men it will seem to follow men are we together now so for every season there is what god is doing it is important for you to understand this because this is where many people miss out if good to see you guys let me start using you up front now watch this in 2019 there is a grace and a spiritual allocation are we together now in 2020 watch this it does not cancel this grace in addition to it there is now a supply of another dimension that necessitates that this season reflects the word of god are you getting what i'm saying now so god is a god of times and seasons i'm saying this because um, now i love the body of christ but there are people who believe that prophetic words are just a church thing it is not true it is not true prophetic words guide operations of the spirit in the earth on the fifth day of the seventh day god did this the word of the lord came it ties time to it on the seventh day of the tenth month the word of the lord came hallelujah so god is a god of times and seasons now the way god works please look up again globally there is what god is doing ah my god i'm seeing a dove resting on five people one two three four five you're my glory the lifter up of my hands please sit down we have to rush now understand this globally there is what the spirit of god is doing across the earth and then territorially there is what god is doing the hand of the lord is upon this fair lady my dear i'm seeing an angel pour oil on you and the lord is saying to tell you he's giving you beauty for ashes he's giving you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness please bring for me the person who will run out by the anointing now just the hand of god is resting on someone i just saw an angel of the lord move don't worry we are going to walk with time will not stay unnecessarily late i saw a grace just one person running by the spirit the lord is bringing restoration to you my dear the lord is saying he's bringing restoration 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 by his spirit hallelujah now watch this because the program of god is based on covenants now watch this this is where the concept of spiritual tribes come 
tribes are spiritual allocations watch this it's not just a group of people following men no god the way god operates is that he distributes his dimensions by covenant so when he wants a dimension of his spirit to find expression in a generation he will find a man then enter a covenant with that man not old and new testament the covenant becomes the authorized allowance that will be the ordination for the activity of the spirit with respect to that dimension are we together now this is where the concept of tribes coming that means in god's global assignment there is an allocation for people groups spiritual people groups because there are graces that represent the covenant of every tribe and there are times that god is doing something in the earth and he will need a covenant who are carrying that grace this is where prophetic words come it looks like men of god all over the world are speaking nonsense but it's not so there is an operation of the holy spirit synergizing the dealings of god so when god speaks it is important that we live. hallelujah the lord declared to us by his spirit that 2020 is a year of dominion and truly speaking believe me it is not a cliche it is not just a want for a theme it is what god is doing in this season through us as a family of faith write this down please very quickly and then we'll pray our time is gone dominion means sovereign control sovereign control someone is going to begin to prophesy the word of the lord is upon a people please don't mind me do the things that i'm doing the word of the lord it's not it's not it's not something that is we see prophecy is not these things that people do it comes from the boil of the spirit the speakings of god through vessels for the edification of the saints now watch this please dominion means sovereign control it means influence dominion means government a system of legislating the will of a man enforcing the will of a king is dominion hallelujah praise the lord so believers are corporately called into the life of dominion it is true that in christ all believers are corporately called into the life of dominion however however there are seasons where the spirit of god seeks to enforce the purposes of christ upon the earth and within a territory and dominion i wrote something down here the dominion of the saints in the earth is the only way the name and the purposes of god will be enthroned in the hearts of men it is through the instrument of dominion that will enforce christ across territories this is very important so when god says it's a year of dominion he means it's a year of influence he means it's a year of control a dimension of spiritual power like never seen before a dimension of the operation of the spirit the investment of heaven upon man like gods upon the earth hallelujah praise the lord over principalities and powers the cry for dominion is a cry to see the fullness of god find expression within a territory this is very important please write this very quickly there are four keys that the Lord gave me that will control the operation of the dominion of the saints, even in this season. Number one, and I've been teaching this a bit as I travel around, is the restoration of the ordinances of priesthood. Priesthood is a dimension that believers do not understand. It's more than prayer. The priesthood dimension of the saints is a, a lot many people pray 
but few people understand priesthood and we have insulted our forefathers we have insulted the altars in our regions and instead of us to be able to learn spiritual lessons the operation of darkness has prevailed for many centuries in territories through the mystery of priesthood to the point that even when the custodian of the altars went their presence or their absence did not affect the continuity of those programs it may have been invoked by diabolic powers but it's still a principle the ordinance of priesthood That believers can come to a point where we sustain an intelligence to stand upon our watch like Habakkuk and make things happen upon the earth at a corporate scale. Not just healing of one head, not just prophesying to one person. No, invoking things from a point and having the effect within a territory. That's priesthood. A priest does not go around a city, but he controls the city. A priest will stay in a shrine and manipulate the elements of the supernatural to communicate a language everyone must hear. Elijah was not in a radio station. Elijah stayed in a position and commanded that there be no rain. It was not prophecy. That was priesthood. So the first key that will establish the dominion of the saints is priesthood. It just so happens that the foundation of priesthood for the believer is prayer. But that is not the only dimension of priesthood. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer. Not I will respond. I will answer. I will answer by showing you great and marvelous things which thou knowest not. Number two, let's hurry up very quickly. The second key to the dominion of the saints is light the mystery of light that means this year will be a feast of light dimensions of spiritual illumination listen we must trust god in this day to step into a dimension of a, of uncanny spiritual exactitude that means that we understand the operations that are responsible for the results that are desired job 29 the first 11 verse the first 11 verses please let's hurry up job 29 moreover look up please job continued his parable and said too oh that i were in the months past in the days when god preserved me three this is the mystery when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light i walked through darkness we're reading to 11 as i was in the days of my youth when the secret of the lord was upon my tabernacle five when the almighty was yet with me and my children were about me when i washed my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil when i went out to the gate through the city when i prepared my seat in the streets the young men look at the effect of access feasting upon these truths the young men saw me and hid themselves the aged arose and stood up. Nine. The princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. Eleven. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me. And when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. Dominion. The dominion power of light. John chapter 1 and verse 5. The Bible says the light shineth in darkness. The light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. There are truths that are responsible for every result in the kingdom. Please look up. I believe that we are going to step into truths that the Bible calls the hidden truths that were kept and now are revealed by his holy apostles and prophets are truths that have been kept not because the ancient could not access it it was not their season when he gave john the vision he says seal it is for an appointed time in other words there is a generation where this will be unveiled to the light of god number three the third key to our dominion 
is the power of results productivity results i believe in results it is the end of all arguments results is powerful it compels results compel it is true we must trust god for a grace to step into dimensions of results that defy argument hallelujah exodus chapter 31 we'll read the first five verses the building of the tabernacle the lord spake unto moses saying to see i have called by name bezalel the son of uri the son of hor of the tribe of judah i have filled him with the spirit of god in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship look at this verse 4 to devise cunning works to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them and in carvings of timber to work in all manner of workmanship there is a grace that makes for productivity there is a grace that controls result look at the kind of hard elements this man worked on gold brass timber there was nothing cheap and nothing mediocre yet he had the ability to coordinate them to produce something valuable there is a grace that must come upon the saints in this season to be productive always in dimensions that defy argument productivity number four and this is very very important very very important micah chapter 3 and verse 8 but truly i am full of power by the spirit of the lord now you see that scripture there truly you can be full of power falsely it says truly i am full of power but that power came by the spirit the ministry of the holy spirit in this season must be a guarded treasure in the life of believers please listen to me not just the pursuit of power not just the pursuit of miracles signs and wonders we must restore the fellowship of the spirit this is where this ministry is founded upon the grace of our lord and grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the koinonia the fellowship of the spirit i am full of power not just by prayer but by fellowship with the holy spirit the evidence of his presence in your life known to all and sundry but truly i am full of power by the spirit of the lord the power of the holy ghost is important there is no dominion without power and authority not assumed power not purported power power that is valid and is provable here and now hallelujah it is the manifestation of the power of god commanding strange results in the lives of the saints that will compel the heathen and anyone around to know that there is a god that god in the midst of his people is not present is mighty the lord in the midst of his people is mighty the might of god is a dimension that by god's grace we will experience this year in unprecedented portions to the point that they looked at paul and barabbas and they they they, they, they called them zeus and hermes greek gods what manner of grace what manner of spiritual investment many people pray but they do not have a relationship with the holy spirit in fact many people hear god but they don't have a relationship with the holy spirit there are three things i know about relating with the holy spirit number one intimacy with the holy spirit is atmosphere dependent your first sacrifice is not to call him your first sacrifice is the labor to culture the atmosphere that makes his presence conducive but the hardest dimension of working with the holy spirit the sacrifice of creating the atmosphere simulating heaven in your environment to allow the holy spirit comfortable 
it says now arise O God Solomon was speaking he says come to your resting place not come to a house I have built I I have simulated heaven within a physical structure find comfort in it you can turn your house into a habitation conducive for the Holy Spirit you can turn your prayer altar you can turn your bathroom you can turn anywhere to a place of real fellowship the presence of God is atmosphere dependent number two you want to walk with the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit only relates with people from a standpoint of brokenness and contriteness you will never truly walk with the Holy Spirit until you are willing to be broken ever broken not once broken ever broken death walks in you daily that life will come out of it to walk in others brokenness so the atmosphere number two brokenness brokenness nothing i know that attracts the spirit of god to the life of a man like brokenness and contriteness number three the third key to enjoying the ministry of the holy spirit is obedience to his voice and his instructions the holy spirit is an extension of the will of the father through the christ and ignoring and trivializing his instructions will close up the continuity of that lecture that dealing process this is the year that god will speak to you and say oh go on a fast three days drop a sacrifice do this the grace to hear his voice and to be prompt in obeying it intimacy with the holy spirit so dominion is not just an impartation you will need to open up yourself to the ordinances of priesthood you will need to labor in the spirit to access light light enough to shine out any darkness number three you must trust god to be productive productive command results all wise and then number four the ministry of the holy spirit that brings power truly let me tell you god desires like never before to empower the saints never before the things that we are seeing are only bits and pieces they are only tests there are higher dimensions of real graces that are coming these graces are not for churches. These graces are not for cities. These graces are transgenerational. But God is beckoning on men and women who will stay to know him enough. That his presence will be more than gold. His presence will be more than reputation. His presence will be more than career. It takes time to know God. There is no knowing God in a nutshell. It does not happen. You will have to labor and stay. One course in the school of the spirit can take two months. The next course can take six months. You must stay till he's done. Hallelujah. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. And for us as a family of faith, as a global family of faith, it's important for us to heed to these instructions. Because these are instructions that are scriptural and are a reflection of the voice of God. That means that you return and begin to fan your prayer altar to flames. Lord, grant me the grace to pray. I conquer spiritual laziness. No excuses. I pray in season and out of season. Not just give me prayer. Oh God, do this. No, no, no. The kind of prayer that transforms. The kind of prayer that molds you into a newer and superior your version of yourself if your prayer is petition driven you are not doing much in the spirit and then light light will require the labor of study the spirit of revelation works when there is an atmosphere of meditation and contemplation proverbs 18 1 true desire a man having separated himself he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom the spirit of wisdom does not come to busy people you must be able to isolate yourself lord open my eyes show me what the ancient saw and you are searching 
and you are searching you are sleepy but you are searching and then light comes from heaven a chapter is open and you will see something you have always looked at but never seen you stand and run in the strength of that light and you will watch darkness move productivity will require learning learning you must be willing to upgrade your mind you must be willing to upgrade your intelligence upgrade your understanding this is the year to not be embarrassed about your ignorance when you find an area of ignorance do not be embarrassed stay and insist till it leaves hallelujah I'm going to give us a few books I had a revelation and I saw four books and the Lord said read it and ask the people to read it I asked Jordan to get it you can get it from him four books that contain very prophetic roadmaps into the season that we are entering as a church for the next 10 years number one the final quest Rick Joyner please write it down number two the call Rick Joyner write it down number three rediscovering the kingdom dr miles Munro. please write it down and then number four divine revelation of the spirit realm mary catherine baxter these four books i saw them in the spirit number one the final quest please i also speak to our global family do well to get it number one the final quest rick joiner j-o-y-n-e-r rick joiner two the call the same person very prophetic classic is a road map to guide the church into the seasons that we're entering number three rediscovering the kingdom dr miles monroe late rediscovering the kingdom one of the most concise books i know that introduces the kingdom in an intelligent way and then number four divine revelation of the spirit realm the spirit realm there's divine revelation of heaven mary baxter there's divine revelation of hell but there's divine revelation of angels but divine revelation of the spirit a rare book not many people have it but I, i'm sure that we should be able to get it please write these four books and by the grace of god we will walk along these materials um, very intricately as the days praise the lord now please i like these are instructions that are unique to our global family and it's important for us to listen every year we bring forth instructions that help us and to give us a direction of where we are going as a ministry um, let me start by truly appreciating the entire koinonia family you will never imagine how far god has taken this ministry and taken what we represent across the earth it is no exaggeration when i say we're a global family God has done great things. He's given us a global reach. He's given us global honor. And we truly, truly thank him for that. And I appreciate, yes, go ahead. Please go ahead. I appreciate all across nations, regions that have contributed uh, in making this happen, taking our teachings. You know, um, yesterday, I was in a meeting and someone just reached out to me with a seed from Saudi Arabia and said someone sent me to give you this I said thank you for changing my life and changing the believers there I said can you imagine that yes sir yes sir praise the Lord um, the Bible says every house is built by some man but God is the builder of all that means that he supplies the intelligence and the wisdom per season. The way that the Lord works with me is that he does not always speak, but his word comes. Um, there are people that God works with them in different ways. God's word always comes in seasons. And when the word comes, it shifts us.
to dimensions in life and in ministry. Praise the Lord. Now, um, at, 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 a, at a workforce level, during our retreat by God's grace, we'll have the opportunity to just deal with some of these things. But this year, by the grace of God, God is granting us the grace, still part of the dominion mandate, and he's expanding our reach across the globe by the spirit of the living God. Praise the Lord. Um, the Lord is expanding us. We're looking at um, building teams across six regions. And, and I'm, happy, I'm happy that that our global family is listening by the grace of God. These are instructions that have come from God. Um, of course, we'll continue what we're doing here. But by God's grace, we're building teams so that we can host major meetings in U.S., in U.K., and Canada. It's going to be once every year, beginning from this year. Praise the Lord. And we're also going to strengthen our African reach by the grace of God. A minimum of three nations is granting us the grace. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're kickstarting with South Africa and Ghana. So those in South Africa and Ghana, God is speaking to us. Praise the Lord. Um, now, let me talk a bit about the school of ministry. Please, we're still suspending it for now, and, and it's a very serious reason why we're doing that. Um, you cannot believe the demand. In a particular nation, there are 50 people, 50, a group of 50 people willing to come into the country for the school of ministry. Uh, and the demand that is in various places to establish centers across but um, we're walking by the Spirit. Amen. It's easy to think it's expansion, but when you go on your own, you fail. And, and let, let me say this. We are not ashamed to grow. We are not ashamed to metamorphose gradually. Sometimes you have to be careful as you grow because people can put pressure on you. And um, if I follow the pressure that people are putting on me, I think we'll establish a branch, a school of ministry everywhere in every state. And then you find out that God will only be in the ones that are consistent with his program. Praise the Lord. And so um, we're still hanging on. We have, to, we have to be very fair on the people. And then we're consulting and coming up with the wisdom strategy on what to do. Now, the third instruction, please listen. This is very, very important. The third instruction is, uh, this is concerning our international guests. We have an average of at least 5 to 20 international guests that come in every week. Um, and it's been a concern that we're not able to see them, we're not able to talk, um, do the things we're doing. So by God's grace, um, and then also for security reasons, by the grace of God, um, we continue to develop our security outfit, but as we're growing... Um, the DSS and the military will continue to demand that we upgrade our security infrastructure to be able to host the kinds of people that we're having and receiving. Um, so because of that and all of that, by God's grace, uh, we're going to start holding a special time with all our international guests in Abuja. It's going to be once every month. It will not be in Zaria. It will be in Abuja. Hallelujah. Yes. So it's going to be a special time where I will be, meet with the guest myself. We'll have the time to talk, teaching sessions, and then I can counsel and pray. And then they can take their flights and go. It will save the rigor. Uh, you can always come if you want the Koinonia experience. We're always open, but for the specialized sessions. And it will be based on registration. It's free. Free, not paying anything, but to be able to coordinate the people in teams. Already we have... As several people were building teams across these regions so that we'll be able to host them. I think you should be happy for this. Praise the Lord. So all our guests, I know that we have some of them here today. Um, I, I came in from Lagos this morning and I was surprised to meet someone who was on his way to Zaria. I'm sure he's somewhere here. He came in from Ghana. I don't know if he's a pastor or he's a, a leader, someone also from Ghana. Okay, I think he's outside. Praise God. 
And so to that effect, we will, every week we'll continue to announce this is just to open us up. There are a few that will come at a leadership level. But God is really helping us to build structures. He's moving us. And we thank God for what he's doing. It's truly a year of dominion. And we'll see the power and the glory of God uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, for your life, you must insist. Please write out right now, just prophetically, the various areas of your life where you seek to see the power of God manifest this year. We are going to pray. I wanted us to finish on time so that we can... Um, I actually came in from a conference through a meeting and I'm here. Tomorrow I'm back. So we're just trying to gain time very quickly. Please write it down prophetically. This and that and that is the area of my life that I seek to see the power of God manifest. My finances, my marriage, my spiritual life. Please write it down. Write it believing. You're not just obeying a man, you're obeying God. I want to see ministry step into another dimension this year. I want to see the hand of God upon my life in mighty ways. I want to see restoration in my life this year. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. One more time. You are, you are the covenant keeping God. Shalabarusi atakata. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh. Have you written it? We're going to pray shortly on it. But just one more project. Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 20. By God's grace, we're going to start building our facility with immediate effect. And um, yes, we build our Zaria facility. God has shown us grace. He's shown us mercy. And then answered I them and said unto them, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we will arise and build. Praise the Lord. And so please pray every day. Pray, speak over the structure. Lord, we declare you are giving us a place that will be a habitation of your glory. And... Um, Truly, God has been faithful. He's granted us great opportunities. More of this will come. I'm talking to our global family, so I may not go into all of the details. But just for you to know what God is already doing. is a year of dominion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we ready to pray? Lay your hands on what you just wrote while you are seated. And I'd like you to give it life. Give it life through the power of prophecy. Give it life in the name of Jesus. Please believe this is a year to believe. Childlike faith, childlike conviction. Shila parus kalabarunda jele pratisi kata. Embratos kabaruja dega de balada balada kotos. Pranda salabarato shiata. Shebaratu sekete balada ba. Lay your hands and speak upon it. In the name of Jesus, I give you life. In this year of dominion, arise, arise. You will not remain as letters. I speak life to you. In the name of Jesus, outside, make sure you are praying. Inside, make sure you are praying. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine from darkness. You 
I will walk a walk in your days. I will walk a walk in your days. I will walk a wonder in your days. See, listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. This is the season to be believers, to believe God. Lord, I believe you are a wonder walking God and you are coming up to me with speed. You are shifting me to another dimension. Lift your voice and declare, Lord, I believe. My faith is alive. I believe you. I believe you. I plunge into prophecy. I plunge into prophecy. I plunge into prophecy. Is someone pray? Supernatural manifestations of your word in my life. Wonder walking dimensions of your grace. Wonder walking dimensions of your hand. I receive a fresh baptism of the grace for prayer, the spirit of priesthood, the ability to stand upon my watch. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Pray inside, pray outside, pray online. In the name of Jesus, you are praying the grace to pray, the grace to be consistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lay your hands on your eyes and say, Eyes open. Open to the mysteries of the kingdom. Open to the revelations of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray that God is able to wash my eyes with eyes salve that I may see, that I may see, that I may see. Someone is praying, Lord, open my eyes, open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. Open my eyes to the mysteries of dominion. Open my eyes to the mysteries of speed. Open my eyes. Show me the secrets of the kingdom. Show me the wonder working power of your word. Are you praying? Open my eyes, oh God. Light, 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 illumination, illumination.
like you to lay your hands on your head command your mind to open open up to creativity open up to excellence at a global scale at a global scale at a global scale open up to a higher dimension of dominion results by the spirit of god lift your voice and pray Hallelujah. You are going to cry for a deeper dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please listen. The Holy Spirit is not an option to the believer. The Holy Spirit is not for Pentecostals. The Holy Spirit is God's advantage to us. I have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When ye not it he the spirit of truth is come listen he is the only one who truly brings beauty and glory out of our lives outside of him we are not worth much but when the holy spirit invests himself upon your life he will turn you into a wonder did the bible not say until the spirit be poured upon us from on high isaiah 32 and verse 15 then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and then a fruitful vine be counted for a forest i like you to pray and say holy spirit may my life and my environment be conducive for fellowship with you in this season intentional fellowship i call for my environment intentionally someone is praying don't invite him just for ministry don't invite him just for success. Invite him for life. I need you as a matter of life and death. Shalabarada bagato shabra negeri balaramos. Shabarada la bre negeri balaragato shenikata. about the ministry of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit can wake you up in the night while you are sleeping my son wake up I want to show you the mysteries of your destiny and if you allow slumber sleep is a blessing but slumber is a cause God does not give slumber he giveth his beloved sleep are we together Walking with the Holy Spirit requires sensitivity. There are times you are on the road and you can just say, don't enter that car. Stand. Not because the car will have an accident. I want to show you something. Walking with the Holy Ghost requires childlike flexibility. When you become too organized, you will never know him. You will need a measure of, of um, that childlike attitude. The Holy Spirit can ask you to sit down quietly in the place of prayer and just play worship. And for the next 30 minutes, you are like a madman. Do you have the flexibility to allow his ministry manifest? 
Hallelujah. Many times we do not experience the ministry of the Holy Spirit because we are too conscious of ourselves. Our reputation, I am this, I am that. And sometimes we want him to fit into the mold of our religion. And because of his love, he will make do with the allowance given him. But there can be more. This is a year where it doesn't mean that you just do stupid things in the name of the Holy Spirit. No, but that you will require flexibility. Flexibility. You can be walking and the Holy Spirit will tell you, go to that market woman selling corn and tell her, Mama, pray for me. It doesn't make sense. It may look stupid. You may look too dignified. But if you can submit to the foolishness of spiritual things, that can be the impartation that shifts you to another dimension. Hallelujah. The wind bloweth where it listeth. John 3 and verse 8. You cannot tell where it's going or where it comes. So is one who is led of the spirit. The character of the spirit is like the wind. Sometimes it looks haphazard, but it's achieving what it's achieving. And you will need to sustain that flexibility. We're going to pray for the grace for influence. What is influence? The ability to compel people to buy into your ideology without using force or cruelty is called influence is one of God's major kingdom advanced strategy it takes evangelism and influence for the manifestation the continuity of God's kingdom advanced program to happen hallelujah there is a grace for influence that can come upon people corporately and they will say, come, let us go to the house of God, to the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. They will tell themselves, let us go. That grace, when it comes upon you, comes upon your business, comes upon the works of your hands, it will transform you, you will become a model, you will become a wonder, even to yourself. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Lord, turn me into an influence for the sake of your glory. For the sake of your glory not to build an empire for myself but so that as men look at me I can point them to Jesus as they look at your life you can point them to Jesus lift your voice and pray cry from the depth of your heart I give us a few prayer points let's pray a few more and then we're done tonight I want us to corporately cry for this grace for favor please listen please listen please find a way of believing that your life will never make substantial progress until the favor of God is upon your head. The wonder of God's favor upon a man, upon an organization, upon a business is a mystery that very few people have understood. Believe me. The fortitude to become the delight of people when no amount of investment channel towards you is perceived as a waste because you have become Dula you have become Hepsiba we're going to pray listen you can tell within a moment that this life is operating just based on hard work and strife and hustling 
but you can tell when the favor of God picks you the difference is climbing a ladder and entering a lift the energy of the lift is what picks you I know what the favor of God can do I know what the hand of God the favor of God please the next one or two minutes find a way of praying from your heart look upon us with favor this year look upon my family with your favor this is the year of the favor of the lord this is the year the favor of the lord this is the year please pray shabakatos kabarata lega barun satash kabarato zegetesh favor upon my head favor upon my destiny favor upon my life my organization my ministry favor covet favor covet in endlessly favor with God and favor with men and 35 let me show you what favor can do job 38 canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds that abundance of water may cover thee next verse can thou send lightning like a messenger that they may go and say to thee here we are you can call lightning to come and it comes you can speak to the cloud and abundance will meet you where you are there are dimensions of favor you must pray the grace to command resources the bible says strong men retain wealth the grace to command the loyalty of nations not men not cities territories lift your voice and pray release upon me oh god that grace release upon me oh god that grace the grace that speaks to the clouds to release abundance the grace that sends the lightnings and they say here we are at your back and call
Let's take one last prayer. Now listen. The Bible says, let it not be that when you have built houses, let it not be that when you are increased in cattle, let it not be that when you have all these things, you will say, my power. Yeshua HaMashiach there is something in scripture called the deceitfulness of riches that means wealth can be like a preacher it can preach a sermon to you and redirect your passion redirect your loyalty you are going to pray and say lord in advance i surrender my achievements in advance i surrender the exploits in advance i surrender the name the fame the increase it is for your glory and it remains for your glory as you glorify the sun the sun will bring you glory lift your voice and vow that vow before God. <laughs> Lift your voice and pray as you increase in ministry. I vow that you will be glorified as you increase me in business. I vow that the nations will know you are the doer as you multiply your grace, your wisdom, your power. hallelujah listen to me please look up the uploads of men can be deceptive they clap for you because you are the one they see but you must be wise enough and bold enough to let them know that there is one who is mightier than i there is one who is the basis the backbone of my life he is not just your support system he is the basis for everything that comes listen god in this season is ready to stretch his arms unrestrained to those who are not ashamed to tell the nations if it means to stop clapping for me so you can have the time to clap for him let it be by the time you are obsessed with the applauds of men by the time you are obsessed with a good name by the time you are obsessed with the mundanity of achievements in a way and manner that it becomes difficult to let Christ be seen directly. Don't say God knows. Men must know that he is the doer. That's where he is glorified. When men do not know he is the doer, you have robbed the testimony that brings God glory. You must be intentional. Create all kinds of strategies to force men to see God when they see you. They will not see him through you ordinarily. You have to find a way of manipulating your image to reflect Christ. Listen. I told you, you've heard me say it many times, that many years ago, God spoke to me and said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. He didn't lie. This year from January till December, you must perpetually cry every day and say lord my desire is to be a mirror that when they look at me they must think about you if they look at me and think about me something is wrong they should look at me and strangely and mysteriously begin to think about you galatians 1 24 and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me apostle look at this wonderful thing through your life and then you tell them i appreciate it but let the glory go to him and you are not cheerful listen if giving God the glory does not embarrass you get ready for surprises God will do things in your life that will cause you to stand in awe because of our various backgrounds and because of many times our upbringing and our experiences there's usually an obsession to want to be the faces around achievements. I want to, I want everybody to know this came from me. 
and, and there is a healthy dimension to that but we must be very careful the people that God wants to use in these days are people who are not afraid to hide their face so that you will be seen can you sacrifice to veil yourself so that you will have no face and the only face that comes upon your veil is the face of his majesty that when men see you by what power and might do you rot this by what grace do you move in this dimension and then you hide your face oh i need to know the face behind it no it's not as important as the god behind the face the god behind the face should be the end product not the face hallelujah listen it looks like it's just a simple charge but it's a very serious issue to god if there's one thing i know about god is his obsession to see that anything that comes from him to you returns glory to him and it is difficult because we can forget hallelujah yes wow you did this wow you organized this meeting wow look this unprecedented dimension of exploits and sometimes you just enjoy the moment and you feel you'll be cheated if you invite god into that moment and you can almost say god wait let me savor the moment when i'm done whatever is left i can call you and he stands because he gave you a will when your life becomes a reflection of his majesty when everything about you becomes an inspiration for people not just to follow you but to follow him they only follow you because you too you are on your way to meeting him please this year make up your mind money will not possess my mind power will not possess my mind achievement will not possess my mind i remain contrite and broken and humble while they celebrate it enjoy it but don't keep quiet that is the time to say ladies and gentlemen i have something to tell you you have celebrated me but i am absolutely nothing without you the god who represents my possibilities and then god is glorified and he's motivated to continue to open greater doors many people have short-circuited the continuity of the lifting of god in their lives because they got to a point where it now became shameful to tell the nations without him i am small i am nothing john got it right that i may decrease so that he will increase it's not self-condemnation my brothers and my sisters it does not rob the fact that you are one with him when the great go on their knees god rises on his throne and he can stand and say who is this defying your achievements defying your accolades defying the applause to let men see me and he will swear a vow with his integrity that as far as you are concerned you will continue to rise for as long as the sun remains in the sky there are covenants that God makes with men. Listen very carefully. Please listen to my last message last year. There are covenants that God makes with men that are not old covenant, new covenant. They are personal covenants that brand his relationship with them by reason of the way they have chosen to walk with him. There are people God has vowed a vow. That even if the nations, even if the earth stops producing, they will never beg. It's a covenant. It's not an impartation. It's a covenant. There are people God has vowed a vow with his jealousy. That for as long as the earth remains, they will continue to prosper and increase. There are people God has vowed a vow that they will live longer and they will fulfill their days. Listen. It's time to come out of the general relationship with God this year. Move so far with God that he has to look for a name to define your relationship. It no longer just becomes everyone come to God. He says, no, I isolate you. Your sacrifice is worthy of note. Your commitment is worthy of note. Your death, your brokenness, your contriteness, your insistence to see me glorify. The pursuit of friendship with me 
necessitates that I define my relationship with you. And suddenly he will call you a name that only you can be called. And that becomes the name, the title of his jealousy upon your life. And he will protect it with his might. Please, the song of surrender must be in your ears. Don't, don't mind all this nonsense you hear people say around and say, oh, no, 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 no. A surrendered life is not a weak life. I've taught you that weakness is one of the most powerful weapons in the realm of the spirit. Weakness is greater than strength. So when you are weak, you are strong. Lord, who am I to do this great thing? If you do not help me, can I ever deceive myself that I can be helped? And you are attracting his strength. Lord, this project that is before me now, do I have the wisdom in my power? I lean not on my own understanding and he's coming. Lord, my academics this year, if you don't arise, will it not look like last year? I surrender everything to you. Hallelujah. Please let's hold hands all over. We're rounding up. This is going to be a very spectacular year. It truly is going to be a year where in spite of the onslaught of darkness, territorially speaking, and over the regions of the north and so forth, God himself will grant the saints grace to prevail. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. And I don't just come out and speak nonsense. No. But we are going to pray. I saw an onslaught of darkness across the north. A massive multiplication of kidnapping. Strategic kidnapping. Where they just pick people like chickens. And this one is not just asking for ransom again. It's just destroying people to be able to inflict fear, to discourage the saints, and so on and so forth. And if we do not pray, especially because of the regions that we are in, are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love you. Do not say like Esther when Mordecai was beckoning on her to speak to the king concerning the threat of her man. She was comfortable for the moment in the palace and Mordecai sent a message and said, look, young lady, they may destroy us who are outside the gate, but be sure they will come for you too. So don't wait on the day they kidnap your son or your daughter or your wife or your husband or your pastor or a leader. We can stand as a global family of faith and lift up our voice and say Lord first we declare a shield and a covering over everyone connected to this family and then we extend it to the body of Christ and especially the body of Christ across this region we silence wars and rumors of wars we silence it within our borders this is not to scare you but there's no point lying to you. I saw this. I have prayed it and I've been praying it on my own. But it's important that the saints pray. Praise the Lord. It's important. I saw a list of specific people that were being hunted for to be picked. And we must pray. Our city is our business. I told you when you are born again, you are saved. But when your territory is secured, you are safe. Praise the Lord. We have to pray. Especially because we have people flocking in every week. This is part of the reasons why we are also making adjustments on our programs with visitors. Because the horse is prepared for battle, even though safety is of the Lord. There is a mandate upon us to communicate responsibility, especially in this season. But we are going to pray nothing missing nothing broken the covenant of peace lift your voice and pray and the god of peace shall give you peace always 
by all means and the lord of peace shall give you peace always by all means and the lord of peace shall give us peace always by all means we fortify our spiritual borders in the name of jesus we speak over zaria we state we speak over joss we speak over kano we speak over maturi we speak over yola in the name of jesus we speak over the northeast we speak over the north central we speak over the entire nation in the name of jesus we command peace we declare peace we establish peace we are blessed in our going out blessed in our coming in in the name of jesus the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity please pray it's a sacrifice this is priesthood it's a spiritual responsibility thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day nor the noisome pestilence nor the destruction that wasted in noonday please hold your hands together but thou o lord art a shield for me my glory in the lifter of my head but thou o lord art a shield for me my glory in the lifter of my head two prayer points while we're holding our hands we're going to pray over every expansion of the ministry this year and all the projects to the region of the earth here in Nigeria, across Africa, UK, US, Canada. Lift your voice. Lord, we are taking the fire. We are taking the dimension of the spirit committed to us by the spirit, by the spirit. Pray for all our teams in these regions. Are you praying? Lift your voice and pray by the Spirit. The Lord gave the word. Great is the company of them that published it. Thank you for access to these regions. Thank you for the ministry of the Spirit. Thank you for signs and wonders. The establishment of the Lordship of the Christ. Thank you for the dimension of your grace committed to us that we are taken to the nations. As can now give the nations to you, O God. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on earth. As can now give the nations to you. together I'm praying I'll pray for everyone father in the name of Jesus we thank you for the privilege to represent your purposes you have exalted my life you have exalted this ministry 
you have made us a praise and a wonder to the nations. And Father, standing and holding hands from Zaria to the ends of the earth, I bring before you a global family. Everyone following online and the millions around the world connected to this grace and to this vision from Asia to Europe to US to the Caribbeans, the angel of your presence has continued to herald that which you are doing in and through our lives. And we thank you. And so far, like Paul the Apostle, I bow my knees to you, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I cry and I pray. Dear Lord God Almighty, you have declared that this is our year of dominion. I dedicate this year, I stand as one you have trusted with leadership over this ministry. And I pray, walk wonders in our midst. Walk wonders in our midst. Father, thank you for all that you have done in and through my life and this ministry. But Lord, let us experience your glory at another scale. Amen. Your glory in another dimension. Amen. We thank you for the opening of the two lift gates to these regions of the earth. We thank you for the ministry of the spirit, the communication of the life, the power, the majesty of the Christ. We declare with our blood and we declare with our life that the nations must know you. We declare that the nations must see Jesus for who he is. Father, we thank you for this year. Thank you for our building project. You will grant us speed. Thank you for the effectual working of your grace. Thank you for all of the structures you have given and put across this nation. Lord, we thank you for our international guests, our visitors from across the world that you continue to bring. Lord, may this be a season of encounter for them. Mm. Thank you, O oh God, for all of our expansion projects across this nation and across Africa and the ends of the earth. We declare that our desire is to see you lifted. May the angel of your presence go with us. May the grace that backs the covenant go with us. May the throne that commissioned and anointed this vision go with us. Father, I pray for every leader, every worker, that this year we will experience your grace in unprecedented dimensions. No death. No limitations. We are a family of love and power and grace and impact in the name of Jesus. May the angels that signify the words you have given to us excel in strength excel in light Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. now I pray for you everyone here and as many who are following online in the name of Jesus and by the God of the heavens I pray that this year may you experience God in a new way Amen. my first prayer sincerely is for a refiring of your relationship with God step into a deep dimension of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I pray for your appetite for the word. You will desire the word even more than your necessary food. I pray for the spirit of prayer and supplication that it will rest upon us corporately. The grace for favor and that for influence, let it rest upon us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In advance, I thwart every operation of darkness. Amen. Schemed against our lives. Amen. We are escaped like the fowler before the snare. Amen. 
In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray for every family represented here. This year is your year of testimonies. I pray for every man of God and every church, every ministry across the globe connected to this grace and this vision. In the name of Jesus, new dimensions. Fresh fire. Genuine kingdom impact. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I declare, take away the sound of mourning. In the name of Jesus. And all through, let it be the sound of rejoicing. In the name of Jesus. I agree with you that everything you desire that you wrote down, I release my faith with you. Even from tonight, speedy answers. Father, everyone connected to this grace and this vision, may humility and love be the signature of their lives. May passion for God be your rear guard. May an unprecedented dimension of the anointing be like a helmet upon your head. May speed be like the shoes on your feet. Be graced with fresh oil. And I prophesy upon you the covenant of peace. I declare upon you that the God of peace will give you peace. Always and by all means in the name of jesus therefore father on my knees tonight and standing before your people and standing before all who are following i dedicate this year we truly call it a year of dominion in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit amen and amen give jesus praise god bless you god bless you God bless you. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kete katos. Kete branda kata pakotos koto pray kete kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.